Rosie is missing in the midst of a rainstorm with thunder that is shaking the mansion and lightning that is illuminating the grounds. All that and more is exploding on the 357 by William E. Spear. Hello, my name is William Spear, and this is the conclusion of our series titled Let Me Go to Her. It is interpreted from Elizabeth Gaskell's The Old Nurse's Story, published in 1852. Furnival Manor is in an uproar. James is demanding Mrs. Stark tell her story. From the drawing room, Miss Furnival has emerged looking terrified, and the organ, booming and threatening with its unseen player, adds its own voice. Now, episode five, what is done in youth. The thunder rocked the chandelier back and forth, and the organ bounced it up and down. James repeated his demand of Mrs. Stark to tell her story. She refused, and with no other clues for finding Rosie, I told him to continue. It all happened when Maud and Grace were in their twenties, said James. Their father, Lord Furnival, loved music and hired an organist for lessons. Grace stepped to the organ, which was playing under the command of unseen hands. Her fingers caressed the keys without actually touching them. James continued, the organist discreetly courted the sisters, made sweet promises to both. Each tried to capture his attention but Maud's charms won the prize. Grace spewed poison. How could he possibly have chosen her? She slammed on the keys, the organ growled, and the thunder roared. She told more of the story. My lying sister kept their marriage a secret. Each of us traveled, so we went months or years without being in the house together. And when we were, the house was so big, we might only see each other for meals. The organ tensed like a fist tightening, and the thunder echoed its intent. Grace spoke further. One evening I saw a servant preparing a tray of food. It's for Miss Maud, the servant said. We had just eaten dinner, so she couldn't be hungry. I went up to her rooms. There was Maud with a child, a girl, must have been four years old. I ran to father, and he was enraged, said she ruined the family's name. Then he kicked them out of the house in the midst of a terrible storm. The organ hit and sustained a note that opened a crack up the wall and across the ceiling to the chandelier. James raged against her arrogance. Maud and the girl died in the storm. The weather. My Rosie was out there, and I had to find her. Music and thunder climaxed again, and the door slammed open. In ran Rosie, and she leapt into my arms. We both sobbed and hugged each other, but the concert was not yet over. Thunder erupted, followed by a blinding bolt of lightning, and there, there in the doorway, were the spirits of young Maud Furnival and her little girl. Rosie screamed, that's the girl and her mother, they helped me. And from the organ appeared the ghastly and ghostly shape of an old man. It was Lord Furnival, with silver hair and gleaming eyes. He walked toward mother and child and raised his cane to strike. Another phantom appeared in the doorway. It was the spirit of young Grace Furnival smiling contemptuously and approvingly. She encouraged the mother and child to be struck down. Then a voice spoke, but the words did not match the actions. Oh, father, father! It was old Grace Furnival begging mercy. Spare the little innocent child. The old man's cane struck its target. An explosion of thunder shook the mansion and the chandelier crashed to the floor. A bolt of lightning flashed across the doorway, and all four figures were gone. Old Grace sobbed. 
what I did in youth cannot be undone in my old age. Then she collapsed. I grabbed Rosie, and we drove all night to get back to my parents' home. Over the next few days, our lawyer filed a petition for us to have permanent custody of Rosie. Grace died a few weeks later. My college was delayed for a year while we got used to a fourth in the family. And Rosie, dear sweet Rosie, never again saw the little girl that called to her. You've just listened to the fifth and final episode of Let Me Go to Her. Organ and theme music are through the courtesy of DS Technician at Pixabay. The 357 is written and produced by William Spear. Thank you for listening.